I came to this work from very on the ground activism. Mm -hmm. And that's how I met Polly Higgins, um, who was the lawyer who co-founded this this uh, this movement, uh, this this public campaign with me. Um, and, And the moment for me was when I discovered fracking. Um, I it, it was I I mean I I I signed petitions and been interested in the environment for a long time, but with with fracking I remember reading about it and the more I read about it the more I thought this is crazy. How are we you know using this incredibly sophisticated and destructive polluting technology you know you know for really very very relatively little return and so much danger to the communities and to the environment. So it was first used in 1970 by a biologist, Arthur Goldston, who used it to describe the damage caused in Vietnam by Agent Orange. So the defoliant that was designed ultimately, I mean, he was actually involved in the design of it, but was utterly shocked by the ultimate use to which it was put. Um, And it was first used politically on the international stage by the Swedish prime minister in 1972, who was Olof Palme. And that was in the context of the first UN conference on the environment, which was it's which was in Stockholm in Sweden. So nearly 50 years ago now, there's a there's a Stockholm plus 50 conference coming up next year. But you're quite right in the public arena. It is only very recently that this term has emerged. This is where the ecocide term comes in, is that what she realized is that it's all very well to have a right but it's the other side of that coin, the responsibilities that criminal law deals with. So we all have a right to life, but that is protected because there is a crime of murder. In other words, it's a crime to take a life. And so she then started to look at what could we use? You know, what, what could we say? What kind of crime could there be that would protect Mother Nature, that would protect ecosystems? And that was where the word ecocide landed in that space for her and she became then very vocal about spreading that word and 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 having it having it grow in the public consciousness i think that one of the big problems that we have is that um we we have a very very long standing and this is western separational mindset I'm not sure if a separating mindset perhaps is the best way to say you know where humanity thinks of itself as or certainly the 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 dominant western paradigm is that we you know nature is there for our for our use you know we can use nature as a resource or a bank of resources effectively we can continue to extract from nature as as if it's an infinite resource you know, rather than actually a living world of which we are an integral part. And I think for us, and this is very strong in the ecocide movement, and it's very strong with us in our narrative around it, which is that one of the things that we believe is that by bringing a law or a parameter into place that says that, you know, damaging the earth to this extent is simply not acceptable, you know, that there are consequences, has the potential to begin to redress that balance a little bit, to begin to say, you know, if we put, I mean, it, it, I know it sounds drastic. People sometimes say, well, wow, you know, ecocide is an international crime. That sounds like really extreme. But actually putting that beside genocide and crimes against humanity, what you're saying with that is very powerful. What you're saying is it is just as Im- important to protect the natural world and it is just as bad to damage the natural world. And if we make that equation, we start to start shifting that mindset. That's my feeling. And one of the ways that we, we sort of describe that is that what's missing is not just a crime, which is clearly missing, you know, the fact that there isn't this foundational legal piece at a present, but what's also missing is... I suppose you might call it a taboo, because if you think about it, you know, you're not going to go to a government and say, can I have a permit to kill 500 people for my new business? I mean, of course you're not. It's literally not going to cross your mind. You won't even go there. But we don't have that same feeling about the destruction of the natural world. And we should. 
you know, we absolutely should. That there is a, there's a document that underpins the campaign, which is called the Earth Protectors Trust Fund, and and it's it when people join the campaign uh, as members, what they're doing is they're putting funds into that into that trust fund, and it has a very specific purpose to sort of move forward the law, um, but also to you know, particularly support climate vul- vulnerable countries. But it also has a purpose statement, and one of the things that it says is is that you know. Every living creature on the planet effectively has the right to peaceful enjoyment and that any serious disruption of that peaceful enjoyment should be considered a crime. All of life has has relationships to other parts of life. Sometimes those relationships are predatory. Sometimes those relationships, but they're always in balance with the ecosystem. It is only humanity that has overstepped that mark to the extent that we have done, that we have actually put everything under threat. Being conscious about all the decisions that we make is absolutely fundamental. But we also mustn't forget that we are not just consumers making choices. We are citizens who are given options. Who are we given those options by? Government and industry. I always put my bare feet on the ground because I think, you know, ultimately that is our home. That is our connection. And and the word ecocide even encapsulates that. I mean, ecocide, the etymology of ecocide is to kill one's home. We don't don't think that making a law of ecocide will instantly fix everything. Of course not. But we do believe that it's absolutely necessary as a kind of step. So first, you've got to create the parameter beyond which it's not acceptable to go. 